One of the questions from Rhonda came in this month. What are the differences between a static route and a dynamic route? If you're working in an environment where you're in a large organization, you have routers, multiple routers in your home office. You've got routers, maybe a 50 remote sites. There's 50 routers out there. This is very, very common to see this. I worked in an environment in a life insurance company where I had two core routers that were connected to my WAN. And then I had 50 remote locations. Every single site has a router connecting to that WAN link. We did not use static routes for these routes that we used. A static route is one where I've gone into every router and I've configured that router to know how to get to any other location. To get to this location, you go out that route. To go to another location, you go out this route. Then you, you have it right inside the router. And you go into every single router and you statically configure all of them. Now, in some environments, people love this because nothing can change your routing table. The routing table is exactly how you configured it. And there it will stay all the time. It never changes, which is great. I don't have to worry about that routing table being modified. And if I'm thinking about that remote location, I know exactly what the routing table looks like. But sometimes you want more flexibility. Sometimes you would like the network to reconstruct its routes depending on what's going on. Maybe you have a meshed network. And if one route goes away, you would like that router to know there was a separate, separate direction it could go. And that separate direction may come up and down automatically. It may not always be there. So in those cases, you have different protocols that are dynamic routing protocols. There's RIP, there's OSPF, there's BGP. Some of those protocols are designed to constantly keep all of the devices aware of everybody around it. And if a device goes away, those routing protocols realize, whoa, we, we lost a site. If we need to get there, don't use the route that you were using. Route yourself through Cincinnati to get back over there. It figures it all out on its own. These are very complex and very powerful dynamic routing protocols. And so now we're routing through Cincinnati because somebody broke a fiber somewhere. Now, when that fiber comes back up and that link comes back up, the dynamic routing protocol realizes, oh, we're back up again. All right, forget Cincinnati. We're going to go directly there now. You didn't have to touch anything. You didn't have to make a modification to your router. You weren't woken up at three in the morning. So when you're working with a, a static route, it's up to you to do everything. When you're working with a dynamic route, don't have to worry about it. It dynamically updates itself and you don't have to make any changes. There's advantages and disadvantages to both. Obviously, static routes are up to you to do everything. Dynamic routes, sometimes changing on their own is not what you like. Maybe you like to have more control, but at least you can make those decisions about what you're doing. So when you're configuring your network, think about whether you want to use a static route or a dynamic route and use the one that works for you.